at ease. Now, some of you I know are wondering what someone like me is doing in a place like this, talking to people like you. What I don't know is why the hell you'd be surprised. Throughout history, it has been the duty, the privilege, and by thunder, the pleasure of any leader worth squat to offer words of guidance and encouragement to those about to embark on a new initiative or a major campaign. And make no mistake about it. Today, you are embarking on a major campaign. I want you to remember that no unit ever accomplished its mission without a strong sense of purpose, a keen eye for innovation, and a constant focus on the impact of their actions. Those of you here today, HR professionals at VA, require those same qualities to accomplish your objectives. Now, it's true that those are high standards, but don't worry about it. We're going to do this by the numbers, and we'll concentrate on purpose right now. And over the next couple of days, we'll take a closer look at innovation and talk specifically about impact. Now, you have the best systems, the finest facilities, and the best procedures to get the job done you've got something much better than that. You look around this place, and by gad, you'll see a collection of experience, talent, and commitment like no other. You span three generations. You come from all over the country and from a wide range of social backgrounds. But for all that diversity, you still hold in common a keen awareness of the purpose for which you serve. But don't take my word for it. As an HR professional, I feel very connected to the veterans. I feel that they've risked their life for us so that we have freedom in our country, and I'm very proud. And knowing that mission is where it starts. Our, our veterans are so important. They come back with all kinds of issues. And if you don't have the right person in the job to, to understand this, I don't think our veterans would get the service and the care they need. It's important to learn about the changing needs of veterans because as we have more people coming in and retiring from the military from Iraq and Afghanistan, the needs are extremely different than they were from Vietnam. We have more people coming in with traumatic brain injuries, more mental illnesses. So the, the need is such that we need to learn what the different needs are when they come in. What are the different specialties of doctors do we need to hire? I like to think of HR's mission contributing to VA's mission as we care for those who care for those who've borne the battle. If the people who do the actual caring, the doctors, the people in the cemeteries, the benefits claims processors, their wellness is suffering, if they don't have the right systems they need, if their HR actions aren't even being processed and so they don't get promoted and they leave VA but they were a great employee, then who suffers? It's the veterans that suffer. Our HR professionals contribute daily. Uh, it's a wide range of products and services. It's from recruiting to hiring to onboarding to training uh, to retention uh, all the way through retirement. Our HR professionals provide a wide range of customer service and support. It's an honor and a privilege to, to serve in that capacity as a human resource specialist to hire the veterans so that is probably our most important task is to make sure that our veterans are taken care of. If you don't have individuals who take pride in what they do, um, I think that that would cause an impact on your overall goal and mission. So you definitely need to have the right person in the right job. Putting the right people in the right place at the right time. Managing a growing, changing set of needs in a pressure-filled, time-sensitive environment. And staying focused on the importance of your job to the mission of caring for those you will never see or hear from, at least ordinarily. Well, as a veteran, and particularly as a service-connected disabled veteran, their services are incredibly important to me. Healthcare quality is, is outstanding. And coming back from 18 months of deployment, I really uh, appreciate the care that I received from VA because um, what I experienced was very emotional and traumatic. So to come back and have 
someone there that understood what I went through as a veteran was very important to me. For a veteran, all we know about customer service is that person at, at, at that personal contact point. And it's often the person at the entry level. And so how we're treated, how we're greeted, and that level of the competence and confidence that person has in what they're doing. The worst thing you can do is go in and have somebody either not greet you and so not recognize you as a person, let alone a veteran who's here for service, uh, but then not have any kind of sense of where to get information, how to respond, uh, is very troubling because if that's at the lowest level, it's, it puts doubts in your mind about the service you're going to get when maybe it comes to something healthcare critical or money in terms of benefits and those kinds of things you might be applying for. They know it. Believe me. They're aware of it every day, and you should be too. Give that some thought as you go through today's activity. That's all for now. We'll talk again soon. Carry on. Good morning. You might be surprised to learn that I gave a great deal of thought to those two opening words. Ordinarily, I would start by saying, at ease, or as you were. But neither one of those seemed to be an appropriate choice for a group like this one. Think about it. I couldn't say, at ease, because some of you, if you were any more at ease, would still be asleep. And I didn't want to say, as you were, because I know how some of you were, especially during your off-duty hours last night. So, we'll go with good morning. All right, now let's get down to business. Yesterday, we reviewed the mission imperatives, purpose, innovation, and impact, and concentrated our attention on purpose. Today, we'll set our sights on innovation. Now, don't let that word innovation fool you. In the world of HR at VA, your world, innovation is nothing new. Now, I know that sounds strange, and I know it's early. Just stay with me. Doing new things, doing old things in new ways, and looking at the mission from different angles, that's a tradition around here. You can ask anybody who's been at this for a while, and they'll tell you. Well, when I started at VA, I remember we had what was called an Electriever, which was actually a, a big system where you actually would have to go and watch the files, physical files with paper, people's OPFs, their personal, personnel folders. You would have to pull their folder. It was such a process just to even get someone's information. Well, it's changed quite a bit um, as far as, you know, things being automated, trying to go paperless. Um, I think the biggest thing right now is probably with the USA staffing, how you go from doing everything paper and hands-on, it's more or less on the computer now. Automation has streamlined some of the processes. Prior to us having automation, you had to go through all the signatures and hand carry the document from person to person, oftentimes getting lost and have to be recreated. With automation, it flows electronically, so we avoid all that and we save a lot of time, more effective, more efficient. Innovation is critical to VA. It will determine whether VA becomes a high-performing 21st century organization or an organization that gets left behind. Our HR professionals receive training through HR Academy as well as other local courses that might be offered. Uh, HR Academy really helped us launch our hiring reform initiative here at the department. I know that we just completed at the end of April fully implementing USA staffing and we spent eight months training almost 4,000 HR professionals in USA staffing. It really is our opportunity to keep ourselves sharp, cutting edge, 
in the automation move towards the 21st century so that we can be the HR of today and tomorrow to serve today's veteran as well as tomorrow's veterans. Now, it's true that VA innovations in HR don't often get the front page attention that the ones in our medical facilities and our benefit offices do. But you know as well as I do that those headline grabbing improvements couldn't happen and wouldn't last without the improvements and the innovations that you people have made, are making, and will continue to make. Just think about the ways that things like USA Staffing, USA Jobs, WebHR, ProClarity, HR Academy, and eGov have streamlined things like hiring, training, and other internal HR processes. Now, imagine trying to put the right people in the right place at the right time in today's world if you're still dealing with SF-171s and SF-612s, overloaded filing cabinets, typewriters, carbon paper, five different colors of correction fluid, and don't even get me started about mimeograph machines. Yes, you've come a hell of a long way. But there's another thing I want you to remember. We don't make all these changes and embrace all this innovation just for the sake of doing it. None of this would be worth the powder it would take to blow it to kingdom come if it didn't benefit the veterans. But it does, and they know it. As a veteran, since I've been uh, involved with the VA, the, um, uh, the changes I've seen in terms of innovation and technology have been amazing. You've heard before people have said, it's not your father's VA, uh, and that certainly is true. There are more benefits more ways to access the information about them, more ways to apply, whether it's online applications with the benefits, whether it's being able to uh, search out information about healthcare with the website that's available. Nowadays, they've even got apps for smartphones. As a veteran service connected disabled veteran, they take care of my hearing process and they do it with the latest technology. And it's only getting better. The Advance Initiative is an investment in people development, workplace engagement, and talent management that's already producing innovations like transformational leadership, corporate senior executive management office, diversity training, HR academy, workers' compensation and safety, knowledge management, and labor management forums. Innovation got us from where we were to where we are. Now we move forward. And that reminds me, one of the worst mistakes you can make in carrying out your mission is getting the idea in your head that stability is a virtue. Stability is not a virtue. It's a trap. It means you're holding your own. You're standing still. You know, it's no coincidence that this assembly was put together as part of the advance initiative. Because advancing is what we do. It's who we are. We're not holding on to anything. Let the losers of the world do that. We are advancing constantly toward tomorrow, and we are not interested in holding on to anything except our commitment to innovation. And we are going to hold on to it with all our strength, and we are going to make it our primary transport to the future, and when we arrive at that future, by thunder, we're going to get there first. And you people are the ones who can and will make that happen. Now that's a lot to think about. On top of the busy day you had yesterday, and the one you're about to have today. Take it in. Make it part of you. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 sharp. Now, for those of you with no military experience, that's 8 o'clock a.m. For you ex-Army types, that's 0800 hours. You Navy vets know it as 8 bells. For those of you who are in the Air Force, it's 1300 GMT. And for you Marines, Mickey's big hand is on the 12, and his little hand is on the eight. That's all.